Tonight I'm here at Boca, which is? The Bar of Contemporary Art, of course. The Bar of Contemporary Art. Tonight at Boca, we're here for a very special gallery event that happened actually at two bars slash galleries tonight, the RX Gallery and Boca. Uh, and this was curated by Cal Speltek of former Seaman fame. Is that not true? That is true. And in the event tonight, we have lots of people, <laughs> including Christian Risto, exhibitions from the Flaming Lotus Girls, uh, Cal Speltek, of course, among many, many other people. They're actually kind of in the transition zone between industrial, hands-on, real knowledge, hard engineering skill fabrication, and this horrible virtual age that we seem to be entering in which nothing's real anymore, no one does anything hands-on, no one touches anything, it's all done on with mouse clicks and keyboard clicks. And I think this is kind of a protest in a weird way against this trend toward virtual everything. Yeah, well I think Cal, uh, who put the show together, has a wonderful aesthetic of really interacting things. I've been very influenced by him. Um, all his pieces have an interactive component where you the participate with the piece, you interact with it, it reflects your input, um, and I think that's, that's just a wonderful aesthetic. And if you have issues with technology, come to one of Cal's shows because um, uh, uh, that will hit you uh, right up in center with it. So um, it's, it's really good stuff. So this is uh, Leda and the Swan, and also known as uh, Rape of the Planet. Yeah, I, I definitely am interested in breathing life into uh, secondhand materials. There's uh, something great about using a found item and giving it a second life. I'm interested in work that people get involved in and interact with. I'm not interested in passive art, and I'm not interested in work that you just kind of uh, stand there and look at. Uh, the main goal of the robot was to see what would happen if I put something on the internet and then invited people to write programs for it. And um, the opportunity to be, normally it's at home in my, in, in my bedroom, but the opportunity to be in a gallery, uh, I hope will draw even more people so that they could um, sort of like being virtually involved in, a, uh, in an exhibit. There's a camera on board, how does that play into the whole piece? So uh, initially didn't have the camera and then people said it would really be great if we could see what it was doing. So I stuck the camera on so people can browse to the robot and they'll see what the camera sees. There's always room for improvement. I, I, I like to think that, um, you know, it isn't a matter of, it's a, it would only be finished if only we did this. It is finished, but it's always moving. I'm about to introduce you to Christian Risto. Yeah, I have, I've made the machine subservient in this piece, uh, but not totally. I didn't totally hide it. The, uh, the mechanical components in the back of her still very visible. You can walk around and see them, and, and if you take a few minutes, you can basically understand how it works. Um, so, obviously, you know, the machine is still important to me, but, but I have kind of made it my slave in this case to serve the, the larger narrative. This doesn't look like your normal sex machine. No, this is actually, this is the most advanced sex machine ever constructed. All the patch planning and trajectory planning is all done in software here. And then this is spitting out to a pair of servo driver cards, which should be in a nicer box eventually. <laughs> and those are driving the two servo motors over on the machine. It's about pushing the boundaries of experience. It's about having something that can do something that no human could, could do, right? I mean, do the humanly impossible. That's what these machines can do. And give you all kinds of um, other experiences that you would get from, you know, normal sex with a, with a partner. Um, and it's, it's just a different kind of thing. Um, these two pieces here are two parts of the inner ring of the wings of the Angel of the Apocalypse from last year. The outer ring that you'll see in the photographs, um, some of them range from 20 feet tall and they have flames that go along the outside. But this is the driftwood that's burning and these are the fireworks flying over here. It was really, really amazing. All those months of work finally paid off in this one night. 
It was really, really great. Artists always telegraph the future. They always are way ahead of everyone else. And I think this is like a very important show.